from Seattle, Washington, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube on the ground at OpenStack Day Seattle 2015. Now, here's your host, John Furrier. Hello everyone, this is John Furrier with theCUBE. We are in Seattle, Washington for special Innovation Day with OpenStack, OpenStack Day. Uh, we're here covering it in, in concert with LinuxCon, which just happened. Our next guests here, Jonathan Bright, Executive Director of the OpenStack Foundation, Lawrence Sell, VP of Marketing. Good to see you guys. How's it going? Going well. Good to see you since Vancouver. It was only a few months ago. Well, OpenStack is obviously booming. Obviously, the interest in cloud. I mean, we're here in the backyard in Seattle, Amazon. You know, big, yeah. big player in the public cloud enterprise adoption. We always talk about that on the Cube. Talk about the adoption. What's happening lately? You guys just fresh off the scene. This Innovation Day is an Uber meetup. It's a, it's a, it's like a bigger event. A lot of interest. Talk about what's happening right now. Yeah, I mean, it's things are just going awesome right now in OpenStack. And the thing that's been so cool this last year is to see some of the new companies that are adopting it. Uh, we had opening keynotes this morning here. Um, I had uh, uh, Nick Garazamotos from FICO who joined me. Um, FICO is running OpenStack in production. We had Walmart in Vancouver. Um, right now, eBay is speaking about Kubernetes on top of OpenStack. And so, you know, when you think about eBay, PayPal, Walmart, um, FICO, like big pieces of our economy are now running on OpenStack, and it's so cool to see that happening. Laura, talk about the adoption. You, it's marketing itself right now. OpenStack really doesn't need marketing because there's so much buzz going on. What's happening around the world? Talk about what the latest things are happening. Yeah, so we, we actually just had some big events in the last week in Bangalore and in Taipei and, and carrying that over to Seattle now and, and Silicon Valley next week. So there is a lot of activity around the world. Um, as we're getting ready for the Tokyo Summit that's happening at the end of October, we're evaluating a lot of speaking submissions in the last week. We're about to launch the schedule. And there's definitely a lot of public clouds that are popping up in Asia, and there's going to be a lot of talks around that. So that's been um, some great adoption to see. And then here locally, of course, there's Blue Box, who was just acquired by IBM recently. So there's a really big team in focus here, a large HP team here. So there's a lot of activity happening here in Seattle as well. Seattle's booming right now, so your tech scene is, is great, obviously known for Starbucks, among other things, but I mean, it really is spectacular growth here. Microsoft's in the backyard here in Redmond. Uh, talk about the innovation here. What's happening in Seattle? What's the topics here, and what are some of the interests? Yeah, obviously, uh, anywhere you go these days, you're going to hear about containers. And so there are um, several talks today about, uh, about containers, and as I mentioned, Kubernetes, which is a container management framework. I think people, containers have been around as a technology for a while, but I think people are really excited to see how things like Docker, Mesos, Kubernetes, OpenStack, um, how these, these new frameworks enable companies to bring containers in and make use of them with their networking and their security frameworks that they already have in place. So that's a big topic for today. Um, the other thing that, uh, that we've, been, we've been hearing a lot about is, um, is storage. And you know, we forget about storage because it's, it's boring, you know, but really it's, it's the key that underlies everything that, you know, the, all these systems. And, uh, and it's really um, always, it's fascinating to hear the approaches that people take to storage. Because you have these giants like NetApp and EMC who still drive so much of the storage industry. But um, you have SolidFire, you have Ceph, you have um, a, a number of other open source technologies. And all of these companies play in OpenStack. And so it's always fascinating to see different users, the choices they make, why, and how the companies are kind of responding to each other in the market. And that brings up the maturity question of storage. You need to store all that big data <laughs> on storage, flash memory, a lot of converged infrastructure. Cloud is the perfect environment for that. What are some of the adoption um, things that you're seeing on the maturity front to share with the folks out there? Because there's always the question of OpenStack has to run faster. And so every year we talk about that, go faster, go faster. <laughs> yeah. People want bulletproof OpenStack. What's the status? Yeah, so bulletproof OpenStack, as I mentioned earlier, you know, when you look at some of these companies who are running it, I think it's a, it's a pretty clear answer about is it ready for real workloads, is it ready for production? Um, but you know, storage specifically, what, what I think is, is really cool to see is how um, these companies are looking to change the way that they've done storage so that they can move faster. You know, they, open, as you said, we're always trying to move faster in the OpenStack community. Part of what drives that is the users, they want to move faster internally. Um, Nick from FICO was just talking about how uh, they are starting to, to push an organization-wide adoption of Swift and of object storage to replace some of their legacy NFS and kind of standard shared storage systems. It's a big culture change, and he talked about how different it is, you know, for, for their teams. 
but what it enables them to do is change the way that they deploy services and move faster. So you know, it's, it's really interesting to see how, yes, even an, an old topic like storage is really key to people who are doing innovative things and trying to go faster in their business. Lauren, talk about the in ecosystem, because one of the things we've observed at OpenStack is the evolution of the ecosystem. It has the uh, peaks and valleys of you know, hype, and then you know, some consolidation, some reformation. When we saw that LinuxCon yesterday, this week, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of biz dev deals, a lot of formation, a lot of teaming up is happening because of all the technology changes. So talk about some of the new, new members, and talk about some of the dynamics around the community forming together to create a bigger whole fabric of open, OpenStack community? Yeah, well, I think one of, or some of the biggest news recently is that Google joined the foundation as a sponsor in June. So that really drove uh, a lot of interest and there's, you know, different companies and startups around that. I think there's a company called Kismatic that's working on Kubernetes on OpenStack. And of course, um, you see companies like CoreOS and others kind of on the edges of the ecosystem. But, um, but yeah, there's, you know, there's a lot of really strong startups. Like obviously we talked about Blue Box being acquired by, by IBM recently and Mirantis getting some more funding this week. So we're seeing a lot Platform of- Platform Nine. <laughs> Platform Nine, yeah, yes. Big funding deal there. Yeah, yeah definitely in this last Is week. Is there standalone companies that will exist here or will everyone be gobbled up by the big guys? Uh, the <laughs> I think that, you know, we're always going to see acquisitions happening and that's a great outcome for, you know, for a lot of these entrepreneurs. But you know you have new ones coming along like like Platform Nine who are who are getting involved and in, and in taking different approaches to you know how do you manage OpenStack where can you run the controllers how can you do it in a way that that's even easier and faster to go get going with it. Um, one other company that that uh, that that recently was approved as a gold member of the foundation is Fujitsu, and uh, and it's great to have um, you know a, one of the the largest technology companies based in Japan come in as, as kind of a very high level member of the foundation as we head into the Tokyo Summit in just a couple of months. So one of the things that we always talk about on theCUBE when we, Dave Vellante and I always reference is to be a platform which OpenStack is kind of, think of it as a, as a global platform for the cloud, if you will. Um, you need developers, you need partners. So give us the update on that front. I mean, obviously developers are key. Your, the session here is all about developers. You see the Kubernetes talk and nodes and clusters and all this <laughs> good yeah. stuff. People are totally geeking out on there. But really the, the reality is is that you got to scale that up. You got to have a partner. What's the plan? What are you guys doing at the foundation to accelerate more developers, more partners, create this robust uh, platform? Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, I would ahead. say a, a third piece to that and where I think we really are focused is the operators. And actually, these last two days in Palo Alto, they, we've been part of an operators mid-cycle meetup and brought together about 200 people that are really out there day to day running OpenStack clouds. And from the foundation perspective, in terms of bringing together these developers, in terms of bringing together the ecosystem, in terms of bringing together the operators, we're really trying to close that feedback loop so that you know when, when operators are running into problems or we can understand more of the technology choices that they're making that are driving you know, the product roadmap for the ecosystem. So we're helping to, to bring together these different groups and facilitate that, that feedback that's happening. And these operators are like big service providers, are the enterprises describe what operator means? Um, that's a great question because it is pretty broad. Um, most of the folks that were there this week are probably running a private cloud in an enterprise or kind of a large web company. Um, and then definitely service providers as well. There are a couple different sessions that were specific to public clouds and, and large deployments. So, Talk about the, um, the growth now in terms of OpenStack. Where do you guys see this next couple of events coming in? Where's the, where's the focus? Is it abstracting away complexities? Is it ease of use? Is it making things work together? I mean, you mentioned Kismatic, you know, making stuff work, you know, making Kubernetes work, for instance, is something that might be too hard for someone in the enterprise and might want some, you know, some simplicity. Yeah, so the, the focus is definitely on, on building on top of that solid, stable base that we have now. Uh, OpenStack at its core is really about automating compute storage and networking. And those components have been around for years and have been deployed at scale with thousands. Um, you know, we have some users that are heading towards hundreds of thousands of physical nodes that they're running on top of OpenStack. And so, um, you know, th those pieces are really solid. And I think going forward, it's about what value can you add on top of it? So there's a, a new project that, uh, that just got started at the end of last year called Magnum. And Magnum is, uh, is uh, a way to take container orchestration frameworks like Kubernetes and Docker Swarm and, and uh, Mesos and others and put them into an OpenStack environment, configure it so it makes use of existing networking, existing security, and gives you a, uh, an automated way to get that infrastructure out there to your developers. That's, that's a big piece of it for sure. Um, the other thing that you mentioned is ease of use, operations, how do you scale these systems farther and farther and, uh, and make it easier for operators to, to be successful running OpenStack over the long term. Those are the, are the, I would say, the big focus areas heading into our, our next uh, two releases. 
Guys, thanks so much. Uh, real quick, I'll give you guys the final word. What's the vibe in Seattle like? You know, Seattle is a unique town. Share with the folks out there who couldn't attend. What's the vibe here? Uh, sure, yeah. The weather was beautiful yesterday, so I saw a lot of folks kind of um, sneaking out during lunch from LinuxCon and walking down to the water and getting lunch, so uh, it's been very nice. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's great here. It's actually my first time in downtown Seattle, and I've, I've loved it. The water is beautiful, and the weather's been fantastic. All right, this is the Cube Conversations on the ground here in Seattle. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.